Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and this one definitely caught me by surprise. Did it catch you by surprise? Uh, Coinbase has officially jumped into the SECV Ripple case, filing an amicus brief. Although technically they're filing an application to file an amicus brief, but the actual amicus brief is also filed with the application to file, so it's all there, we get to see it. It's just a question of whether or not the judge is going to technically approve it so that it becomes a part of the case. Me thinks the answer is going to be yes. She's been uh, pretty accepting of these amicus brief filings to this point. So I'll just say this, Coinbase, if you're going this far, and they are indeed saying very uh, positive things for Ripple and XRP, why don't you just relist XRP already? Yeah, I know you're not going to do it. No, relist XRP, though, seriously, at, at this point, uh, Coinbase, like, you, you're on the SEC's S-word list, and I'm censoring myself because it could be children's is in the background. You're welcome, parents. But you're, you're going to be on that list because you're saying naughty, naughty things about the SEC here. You're getting verbally aggressive, and rightfully so. You're in the right. I'm agreeing with uh, pretty much everything that's written in here. Um... Though I will say this at the outset, too. In reading through this amicus brief, the whole document, I believe it was like 30 pages, and then part of that was like the table of contents and stuff like that. But anyway, in reading through this whole thing, um, it it was not what entirely what I would have expected. So it was nice, like I said, to see that they're defending uh, Ripple and XRP just in a general sense, but that's not what they were heavy on. What they were heavy on was the fair notice defense. And I'm not completely sure as to why, because... I was just thinking back, it made me think about what Attorney Deaton has said about fair notice, you know, as it pertains to Ripple specifically. If, um, you know, if, if, if we get to the point where we're worried about Ripple winning on fair notice, that's because there was already a very bad decision regarding XRP specifically, because that's what would be determined first. So maybe in the, in the, the case of uh, Coinbase, uh, they, they, I mean, I'm sure they're thinking about their own rear sides and you know what, fair enough. But um, they're pointing out that the broader crypto industry just was really... Uh, you know, led one way, and then you see enforcement actions that make you think, was the SEC drunk when they're saying some of this stuff? It's just all sorts of crazy stuff. So um, I'm mostly going to focus on what Coinbase had to say about Ripple and XRP. A lot of this, although I read the whole thing, I'm just going to skip over big chunks of it because it's just a lot of stuff having to do with fair notice defense that while I agree with, I'm surprised they focus on it, number one. And number two, um, I've talked about it so much on this channel, I just feel like it's the degree to which we'd be beating a dead horse is completely unacceptable. But before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, right? I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Shout out and credit to James K. Filan, attorney and member of the XRP community for sharing Coinbase's amicus brief here. I also want to share with you this tweet from attorney Jeremy Hogan on this topic. He wrote, Coinbase, amicus brief. Well, heck, if you come out in opposition to the SEC here, SEC here, might as well relist XRP, don't you think? And at this point, I don't know what the hell they have to lose because I, I have, <laughs> and they must have the suspicion at this point too, I would think, it's, you know, based on what... Uh, you know, the, the posture based on the posturing of the SEC and what Kim Jong Gensler said to this point, uh, Coinbase, don't you think you're just going to get sued regardless? Because if you're so confident in your position on XRP, or if you were, and I do believe that you were, like, like to, to go back on it at that, uh, you know, just when the SEC comes after Ripple and XRP holders specifically, it's, it's a bit disappointing here, but I, I guess my stance is fine. I get it. We're all getting tech fine, so I, I do have some level of sympathy for Coinbase, but my gosh, at this point, can we at least see now that we have, at least now that we have the benefit of hindsight that eh, maybe removing XRP from the platform, maybe not the best move because everything else is still under attack. You didn't even buy any additional time. Well, there's a, another uh, lawyer here named Jesse who responded to Hogan and disagrees and said, I think Coinbase is doing the right thing for themselves and have been relisting could open themselves to SEC scrutiny. If I were their counsel, I'd wait this out. Attorney Hogan responded to that and wrote, they should hire you instead. Sticking your neck out halfway makes no sense. So clearly Attorney Hogan does not agree with Attorney Jesse Hines here. 
And it is a bit peculiar. I mean, if, if the SEC, okay, their stance is let's be extra super duper cautious, but then you're coming out and telling the SEC why they're wrong. Well, if you're telling them why they're wrong on, on XRP, if you're so confident that they're wrong in it, then why would you make yourselves look guilty by delisting XRP? I just, it's a bit peculiar, but hey, you know, I don't pretend to be a lawyer, you know? So into this, this amicus brief here, uh, let me get down to page two right here. Let me scroll on down right here. Uh, interests of amicus curiae. Yeah, a lot of this I can seriously just gloss over because the interest, are you surprised at their interest? They want to be able to trade as much as possible because they make money on trades. If there's less activity in the United States because of onerous SEC regulations or lack thereof, a lot of uncertainty, well, that pushes business elsewhere. And so obviously, and they do, so they do have a legitimate interest. I'm just saying. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in right here. Uh, Coinbase writes the following. Rather than engage in rulemaking, the current SEC administration has sought to expand the SEC's jurisdiction over the cryptocurrency industry uh, the, through ad hoc enforcement actions alleging on a retrospective basis that already trading digital assets previously understood by the market to be commodities regulated by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, or CFTC for short, or other non-securities are actually securities subject to SEC regulation. To manage the uncertainty created by this approach, Coinbase and many other U.S. market participants trying in good faith to comply with existing legal restrictions engage in a burdensome asset-by-asset -asset analysis to determine whether each asset is sufficiently unlikely to be considered a security. Okay, so fine. Again, like I said, so why not relist XRP? Is Coinbase play fighting or is this the real deal? And I'll say this also, um, and this was kind of surprising and a bit disappointing. We already know, it's publicly available knowledge, that the S that uh, Coinbase had a meeting with the SEC and it may have been, I can't remember exactly, maybe a month before they listed XRP and said, hey, um, our legal analysis shows that XRP is not a security. We're going to list it unless you tell us that XRP is a security and we shouldn't list it. And they were not told to not list it. So Coinbase did, in fact, list XRP. They didn't go through any of that analysis. I think it's more like, it looks like a lot of this and fine. It's good for Ripple. It is good for XRP. I'm not to deny that. But my gosh, it just, the way that they approach this, I will say, it seems like it's, it's heavy on just posturing so that, you know, if and when, and I think it's more so a question of when the SEC comes after Coinbase, um, you know, there's maybe something to make, like maybe there's have some sort of impact here. And in this stage, it's just, it looks kind of like that, but it is what it is. I get it. if they're looking for their own rear side, looking out for their own rear side, I got it. I got it. I got it. Anyway, then Coinbase continues. The due process issues raised in this SEC enforcement action in which the SEC publicly alleged for the first time through litigation that digital XRP tokens sold by Ripple Labs and two Ripple officials were offered as unregistered securities in violation of the 1933 Securities Act should be rare, but will only multiply in the absence of SEC rulemaking for digital assets. The absence of formal rulemaking has led to unexpected enforcement actions like this one that create market uncertainty and profoundly disadvantage U.S. trading platforms like Coinbase as they compete with offshore platforms and jurisdictions where there is no risk of regulatory enforcement surprise. Okay, well, I think we're all going to pretty well agree with that. And that's why it's, it's like, I'm glad that they filed. I really truly am, so don't take this the wrong way, but I'm just sitting here thinking like, it's been almost two years and Coinbase has mostly been silent for almost two, four years. And this is going to be precedent setting. It's going to be very impactful in Coinbase, which is why, again, I applaud them for filing this. So I'm not going to go too far in one direction here where it's all negative. Not Definitely not. I'm, I, in fact, to the contrary, I think it's mostly positive. I really do. But I, I feel like I'd be remiss if I just didn't point out how regrettable it is that they could have been rallying the troops, you know, people in the world of crypto reducing tribalism, saying, hey, we got to work together, rah, rah. And we didn't see that from Coinbase by and large, did we? Little comments here and there. I mean, there may have been something from Brian Armstrong about how he thought so-and-so about the SEC v. Ripple case. There was minimal bits of stuff like that, but mostly it was just a big nothing. It was a big silence. But they do understand at this point, even if they didn't get it about two years ago, they understand that this is going to impact them. And it's in their best interest to say something here and say something good about Ripple and XRP. And they are. So to their credit, they are at least doing that. Now into their preliminary statement. One of the fundamental due process protections guaranteed by our Constitution is that government agencies cannot condemn conduct as a violation of law without providing fair notice that the conduct is illegal. 
By suing sellers of XRP tokens after making public statements signaling that those transactions were lawful, the SEC has, has lost sight of this bedrock principle. Exactly. That is very important. The SEC, through their actions and words, indicated to market participants that XRP was not viewed as some sort of illegal security by the SEC, and they expand upon it. So let's keep going. For years after Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP were launched, the SEC watched as multi-billion dollar trading markets for these cryptocurrencies developed without stating that it viewed any of these assets as securities subject to the onerous restrictions that come with that classification. In 2018, after XRP had become the world's third largest cryptocurrency behind Bitcoin and Ether, William Hinman, the SEC's then Director of Corporation Finance, signaled in a speech that fully functional, mature cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Ether, were not securities. After Director Hinman's speech and additional SEC guidance reaffirming its core message, multiple sophisticated market actors, including a former CFTC chair, understood the SEC to be saying that the SEC would not treat many long-traded digital assets, including XRP, as securities. Coinbase shared this market-wide understanding and listed XRP for nearly two years of trading activity from February 2019 through January 2021. Yeah, exactly. So it would have been nicer if they did a breakdown of why they believe what they believe, but they're just citing that they came to that conclusion. Well, at least they mentioned it, I guess, but damn, it's... <laughs> that's why, although this is good for Ripple and XRP, that's not the greatest focus. It's mostly about fair notice defense, broadly as it impacts, the, you know, the, the greater uh, crypto ecosystem, you know. Um, and then there's, uh, bottom of page, or tour, yeah, here, on page four. Enforcement actions should not be the primary means by which the SEC makes known what it considers to be illegal. This is particularly true when it comes to regulating emerging U.S. industries like the cryptocurrency sector, which can be driven overseas by unexpected enforcement litigation, leaving customers without protection. And so again, the SE, you know, Coinbase, they do get this. They understand that this is going to be bad for their entire business model, which is why again, a minute ago, I was just kind of begrudging the fact that they, they were pretty quiet, pretty quiet for almost two years. That's a long time to be pretty quiet on something that's highly consequential to you, you know? Uh, now let me get down to uh, bottom of page 11 here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, yes, this section titled... Oh, yeah, sorry, I went slightly past it. This enforcement action surprised and harmed crypto market participants. Well, ain't that the truth? Because XRP was very similar to Bitcoin and Ether, and because XRP was the third largest cryptocurrency behind Bitcoin and Ether by market capitalization, numerous stakeholders reasonably understood Director Hinman's speech to mean that the SEC viewed XRP to be outside of the SEC's, SEC's regulatory purview. And I'll pause and note this too. Brad Garlinghouse said this back then after the speech. He thought that the Bill Hinman speech was good because it signaled what the SEC actually thought at that time. And if you apply XRP to the framework cited by Hinman in June of 2018, XRP was sitting pretty. And it wasn't just Brad Garlinghouse that thought that. It wasn't just me that thought that. Many others. It's, it was very sophisticated actors in the space. Coinbase continues. In 2020, for example... Former CFTC chair uh, Christopher Giancarlo published an article relying on Director Hinman's analysis to conclude that XRP was not a security. He explained that XRP and the underlying XRP ledger were designed in 2011 and 2012 specifically as a payment mechanism and further stated, quote, consistent with statements from other SEC officials, Director Hinman named Bitcoin and Ether as examples of cryptocurrencies that were or have become sufficiently decentralized networks such that regulating the tokens or coins that function on them as securities may not be required. If Bitcoin and Ether are sufficiently decentralized, the case for decentralization of XRP is even stronger. So look, he thought that if you look at those metrics, and I've argued this as well, many have, I think even Tony Deaton had, XRP passes the test set by, the, by that even better than ETH, for example. Coinbase continues. In addition, the widespread market adoption of XRP speaks volumes about how the market understood the SEC's guidance. As this court has noted, 
Before the SEC filed this lawsuit in December 2020, quote, XRP was listed on over 200 exchanges. Billions of dollars in XRP was bought and sold each month. Numerous market makers engaged in daily XRP transactions. Ripple's on-demand liquidity product was used by many customers. And XRP was used in third-party products, many of which were developed independently of Ripple, end quote. It is implausible to think that all of these disparate actors would have done so if they believed, as the SEC now claims, that XRP sales were illegal. Exactly. It couldn't be more obvious. It couldn't be more... It's, it is nice to see Coinbase talking about this. Just wish it was sooner, but still, yes. You really think all these actors are like, eh, it could be illegal. We're just going to do this thing anyway. No, of course not. There's nothing but evidence to the contrary. Trying to do things by the book because nobody wants to get sued by the SEC. Duh. Coinbase continues, when the SEC alleged for the first time that XRP was a security in its December 2020 complaint against Ripple, innumerable market participants worldwide were surprised and harmed. In the end, the constituents who suffered the most were retail uh, customers, as evidenced by the fact that the SEC's announcement of this lawsuit triggered $15 billion decline in XRP's market value. This result could have been avoided if the SEC had engaged in the time-tested, noticed, and comment rulemaking process under the Administrative Procedure Act to establish standards that would have alerted the public that the SEC views XRP as a security. Exactly, but they didn't do that. Because they don't care, and even they back then, back in the day, I don't even think they knew what the hell uh, XRP was. They had come to a conclusion. Uh, let me jump on down to now page 16 here. Uh, jumping in right about here. Oh. The SEC is not entitled to a summary judgment ruling that finds, as a matter of law, that there is no set of facts under which Ripple's fair notice defense could prevail at trial. As Ripple has argued, the mere fact that so many market participants believe that XRP sales were allowed raises substantial, disputed questions of fact about whether a person of ordinary intelligence would have understood the SEC's guidance to allow the very XRP sales that it is now seeking to punch. Yeah, exactly. So I'll point out, and when it comes to summary judgment, we're talking about as a matter of law, the, the, the facts are so clear that it's, it, there's no, it's not even reasonable to have a jury trial because uh, any, any reasonable <laughs> jury anyway would just recognize that there's not a dispute over the, the actual facts of the case here. And so with what the SEC is asserting relative, you know, regarding fair notice specifically as Coinbase is pointing out here, that's not lost on me, obviously. Of course, there's, this, this would be disputed, you know? Um, I go to uh, here. A little bit lower. Yeah, getting close. So let me jump down to page 18. Yeah, here we go. Uh, right here. Okay, indeed, the SEC recently announced that its enforcement division's crypto assets and cyber unit would soon double in size. Leading with enforcement actions before proposing rules results in arbitrary outcomes with limited value as guiding precedent. Ripple and others have been the subject of extensive enforcement scrutiny, while others with nearly identical products or services have apparently been subject to none. This approach has led to both confusion and the uneven treatment of market participants. Regulators should not be picking winners and losers in the cryptocurrency industry. That should be setting... Uh, they should be setting, rather, the rules openly so all companies have a chance to follow. See, that could have been written by anybody in the XRP community. You know, we've been saying that same stuff for years here. That's abs And that's absolutely correct. And Ripple has been unfairly attacked in this regard. So it's it's, it's pretty ridiculous. So that, that's pretty much the gist of it. And then if you go to the very end, uh, the last page here just says, uh, it's like a one-sentence conclusion here. Uh, for the foregoing reasons, the court should deny the SEC's motion for summary judgment, dismissing Ripple's fair notice defense. Okay, fair enough. Now, Coinbase, go ahead and relist XRP, damn it. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.